Well, welcome future doctors. This is Dr. Mohammed Gamil, lecturer of ENT, Harwan University. This is our first ENT lesson in this year. I hope you like it and I hope we continue the whole year with success and prosperity. Okay, so our first lecture will be about the anatomy and the physiology of the nose and the paranasal sinuses. So here is the broad classification. It's external nose, nasal cavity, and paranasal sinuses. So the external nose is a triangular shaped projection in the center of the face consists of osteocartilaginous framework covered by muscles and skin. So the external nose lies in the midline of the middle third of the face. Its apex is called the tip. Its base is attached to the facial bony skeleton. Its anterior border is called the dorsum. The upper part of the dorsum, which is supported with bone, is called the bridge. Its upper third, which is bony, consists of two nasal bones, which articulates with each other in the midline. Its lower two-third is cartilaginous, consists of two cartilages on each side, the upper lateral cartilage and the lower lateral cartilage. The covering skin in the upper third is thin and contains no hairs nor glands. Its lower two third is thicker and contains hairs with sebaceous glands. Watch both figures closely before turning to the other next slide. The danger triangle of the face. Due to special nature of the blood supply of the human nose and the surrounding area, it's possible for retrograde infections from the nasal area to spread to the brain. For this reason, the area from the corner of the, of the mouth to the regions between the eyes, including the nose, the maxilla, is known to doctors as the dangerous triangle of the face. This is a very, very, very important clinical data for you as a doctor. So any small infection in the nose should be treated closely and with care with no negligence. Here is a demonstrative photo for the veins of the external nose and you can see how it is connected to the cavernous sinus which is directly and closely related to the brain. You can watch and recognize all the veins coming from the nose and the face going directly to the cavernous sinus. So going from the external nose to the nasal cavity, it's consisting of the nasal vestibule, which is in the anterior and inferior part of the nasal cavity. It is lined by skin and contains sebaceous glands, hair follicles, and hair, which is called vibrisi, which is, which is easy to get infection. As you can see in this photo, there is a frontal or a small abscess in the vestibule, vestibule of the nose. and here and then the nasal cavity proper again it's the nasal cavity it consists of the nasal vestibule which is the anterior inferior part of the nasal cavity lined by skin with sebaceous glands and hair follicles which is 
easy to get infection forming frontiosis or frontals of the nasal vestibule and don't forget the dangerous area of the face and then we have the nasal cavity proper so the nasal cavity proper it has a roof which is consists of three parts the anterior sloping part which is formed by the nasal bone the post nasal bone the posterior sloping part which is formed by the body of the sphenoid bone and the middle horizontal part which is formed by the cribriform plate of ismoid watch the figure the floor of the nasal cavity proper is formed by the palatal process of the maxilla and the horizontal process of the palate bones the medial wall of the nasal cavity proper is formed by the nasal septum can you see it in the mid line or in the middle of the nose separating the right side from the left side so the nasal septum is formed of a quadrilateral cartilage anteriorly perpendicular plate of ismoid bone posterior superiorly the vomer bone posterior inferiorly and the nasal crest of maxilla inferiorly The, la the lateral wall of the nasal cavity proper is, is marked by three scroll-like bone projections called turbinates or concha. Below and lateral to each turbinate is a corresponding meatus. So, in the lateral wall, the nasal lacrimal duct opens in the anterior part of the inferior meatus. So, the inferior meatus is below the inferior turbinate. The anterior group of the paranasal sinuses, which are the frontal, maxillary, and the anterior ismoid sinuses, open to the infundibulum in the middle meatus. So, in the middle meatus, so below the middle turbinate. The posterior ismoid sinuses open into the superior meatus. The opening of sphenoid sinus situate in the sphenoismoidal recess lies above the superior turbinate. Again, so we have the inferior meatus below the inferior turbinate has the opening of the nasal lacrimal duct we have the middle meatus had the opening of the anterior sinus group frontal maxillary and ismoidal sinuses and we have the superior meatus having, having the opening of the posterior ismoidal sinuses or the posterior group and over the superior turbinate we have the sphenoismoidal recess which had the opening of the sphenoid sinus so after passing by the nasal vestibule and the nasal cavity proper we have the posterior nerve or the quana which is bounded in the middle in the middle by the nasal septum and on both sides by the inferior turbines so nasal cavities histology the mucosal lining is respiratory epithelium formed of columnar cells goblet cells mucus blanket and cilia and the olfactory epithelium is small area near the roof so the nerve innervation of the nose is formed on olfactory nerve foot nerves which is the cranial nerve number one trigeminal nerve cranial nerve number five 
parasympathetics and sympathetics. The blood supply of the nasal cavity. It's coming from the internal maxillary artery, sphenopalatine artery, greater palatine artery, anterior ismoid artery, posterior ismoid artery. So again, internal maxillary artery, greater palatine artery, sphenopalatine artery, anterior and posterior ismoidal arteries. So what is the little plexus? The little plexus is an area which has collection of multiple arteries supplying the nose in one point with great blood supply which is liable to epistaxis. You can see it at the anterior part of the nasal septum. Now we are passing to the paranasal sinuses which are air filled bony cavities located in the face and the skull adjacent to the nose. We have the maxillary sinus, ethmoid sinus, frontal sinus, and sphenoid sinus. Maxillary sinus. As you can see it, on the CT scan and in the bony cadaver. The maxillary sinus is the, in the, is the largest one present in the maxilla bone, one, on one either side of the nose and below the eyes. The sinus drains in the nasal cavity through its ostium that is situated in the middle meatus, as we said before. The ismoid sinus. Watch the arrows. This sinus compri comprom comprises a group of air cells which form one of the most complex structures in the body. Hence, the sinus is rightly named the ismoid labyrinth. <clears throat> Do you know the word labyrinth? Labyrinth is Mataha bil Arabi, just a place you can get lost in. The frontal sinus. The frontal sinuses are situated beneath the bone of the forehead and just in front of the bone overlying the brain and drains through the frontal recess to the middle meatus. Sphenoid sinus. The sphenoid sinuses are deep within the skull, behind the ismoid sinuses. The sinuses open in the upper part of the anterior wall and drains into the sphenoismoidal recess. The green arrow on the left side. So the respiratory function. The nose acts as a respiratory airway. It transfers air to the pharynx. The nose is not a passive channel for the passage of air. It offers controlled resistance to the passage of air called a nasal resistance. This nasal resistance is essential for proper expansion of the pulmonary alveoli. What is the nasal cycle? 
The nasal mucosa has a physiological cycle called the natal cycle. It consists of cyclic congestion and decongestion, which alternates between the right and the left nasal cavities every two to six hours. Normal person is unaware of this cycle because the total resistance of the airflow remains unchanged. So the second function for for the nose at the respiratory organ is air conditioning. How? By adjustment of the temperature and the humidification of the inspired air by the highly vascular nasal mucosa and the nasal secretions. This air conditioning is essential for proper function of the pulmonary alveoli. The next function of the nose is a protective function. So the nose acts as an air purifier to protect the delicate pulmonary alveoli who are protecting the lung. How? The large particles are filtered by the hairs, the vibrisi. Do you remember the vibrisi at the vestibule? And the fine particles adhere to the viscous, viscous muco, mucus blanket. The, the cilia drive this mucus blanket continuously backwards, pulling it backwards to the pharynx to be swallowed. Inhaled foreign particles are expelled by reflex sneezing. What about organisms? Are combated by the antimicrobial action of the immunoglobulins and the bacteriolytic enzyme, lysozyme of the nasal secretion. Again, so well, the nose acts as an air purifier. How it expel large particles are filtrated by the vibrisi. Fine particles attached to the mucus blanket inhaled foreign particles can be expelled by sneezing and the microorganism <clears throat> will be fighted by the enzyme lysozyme of the nasal secretion well, third function of the nose is the olfactory function the nose smells the airborne odoriferous particles they stimulate the olfactory epithelium the impulses are then carried by the olfactory nerve fibers to the brain. The sense of smell increases by sniffing and deep inspiration. Fourth function is the phonatory function. The nose acts as a voice resonator, especially for the letters M and N. Finally, the drainage function. The nose drains the lacrimal duct fluid, the tears, and the paranasal sinuses. So what is the physiology or the function of the sinuses? Well, it's unknown. Maybe brain protection by shock absorption during trauma to the face, maybe resonance of the voice, maybe reduction of skull weight. Well, Thank you doctors for this lecture. I know anatomy and physiology can be very boring, but well, we can do anything about it. So just learn it by heart and I'll see you next lecture. Thank you.